So let's talk about multiple GPUs, not older ones like these props that I'm just using, but modern H100. We're gonna do dual GPU. I'm gonna show you kind of how to do this. I'm gonna look at it in Keras, but we're gonna also talk about it in PyTorch. Do you want me to run a code specific PyTorch one? If I have time with this system, I'll definitely look at that. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in that. I am using a dual H100 Hopper Edition machine. So these are, these are like $40,000 each GPUs that the Exact Corporation has been kind enough to let me make use of on this YouTube channel. I've done other things with them in the past and they've always been great supporters of this channel and great thanks to that. You can see the machine here. You can see the two H100 GPUs. So let's take a look really at how we would do this sort of thing. Now, before I get into parallelization of, of, of two GPUs, let's talk really about some of the key things. And VLink is something you've heard of much over the years, and it's slowly been pushing its way to the server room, and it's completely in the server room now. You cannot get it on the 40 series. You cannot get it on the Ada Lovelace edition GPUs. And what even is NVLink? What it does is when you start to add multiple GPUs to a system, it allows you to have highly, highly speed connection between two of those GPUs at a time. And there's whole entire systems of using NV switch that allows multiple nodes up to 256 of these machines at once to allow pairs of those GPUs to communicate extremely, extremely fast. That's what NV link is. I am talking in this video more about on a desktop computer that you would install. How would you get it to use multiple GPUs? When I say multiple, typically it's going to be two if you're setting it up in a desktop type situation, unless you're buying a really expensive high end that can do four or eight. I guess eight, eight or 16 is about the most that I've seen on a single host. I've not personally owned or worked with such, such machines, but uh, they, they appear to exist. So, Let's talk about how you would do training parallelization. So you're essentially duplicating your model across and allowing the batch to batch that data out across the GPUs and combine to get considerably additional speed. There's several ways that you go about doing this. So when you're looking at code that makes use of multiple GPUs, the code, whether you're using uh, Keras, TensorFlow, PyTorch, you can directly place your tensors onto whatever device you like. In PyTorch, this is done. So when you're creating tensors, you'll see this two device and the device is where you're putting them. That's like CUDA 0, CUDA 1 on PyTorch and uh, GPU 0 and GPU 1 on on Keras. So this is the most direct approach. You do this, you're going to parallelize it across the GPUs and you're directly controlling it. You can span one model across multiple GPUs or you can use them in parallel for doing largely the same task, basically putting different batches on each. The code that I'm looking here is StyleGAN3, which I have sifted through a fair amount and they use this kind of technique there. It just supports it out of the box, and that's quite nice. Other approaches are something like Horovod. And Horovod, you can make use of this on PyTorch, Keras, I believe even MXNet are all supported with this. And it's it's integrated directly into, into Python. You have to do a few things to really get it compatible. It is working really designed to scale across multiple nodes. So you've got multiple computers, each of which has multiple GPUs on it. But you can also use it just for a, a system with two GPUs. One thing I particularly like about Horovod is you're using largely the same architecture across whether you have two GPUs 
on your local system or if you are connecting off to a server where you may well have eight if you're using higher end, higher end GPUs. For this system that I have from Exact Corporation, there's just, there's two that we're going to be dealing with and not using NB Lake. If you're dealing just in the PyTorch arena, then you can use the DDP, which is the distributed data parallel that is built into PyTorch. It does take some configuration if you're gonna run it across multiple physical nodes, hosts, with each of which may have multiple GPUs on it, but it allows a lot of capabilities and it's built into some of the cloud native offerings. And then finally, looking at the code example that I have, this is in Keras, but it's similar technique across. If I have enough time with this system, I'll probably create a, a PyTorch equivalent, probably using DDP, but let me know in the comments, are you interested in that sort of a, of a thing? Just looking at what I have here kind of quickly, TensorFlow does tend to throw out just a ton of useless warnings. So I have this instruction here to suppress those. Also, the process of installing TensorFlow is, is kind of, doesn't work in Jupyter real well because it, you, you sort of have to define these environmental variables inside of Jupyter because they are normally set up by the Conda environment. It's kind of a train wreck, but that's, that's how TensorFlow installs. And when you have everything working right, it, it works. But getting there can be an epic journey. So I have that defined. I have here where you can query the GPUs, find out how much memory they have. You can see I've got the two H100s. These are the PCIe version. There's really three different variants that you, you can get this in, but we're dealing with the PCIe. And we make use of the dogs versus cats data set. This was originally a Kaggle competition, and I've been using it really over the years just to test the training. So I set up the distributed training, and this is really just basically setting it up so that it's going to you, at the end of each batch, it's going to bring the data from the GPU. It's parallelizing everything across the GPU. So it is making a duplicate of the data for the batch anyway, and the parameters of the GPU, but it allows, it allows training to occur in parallel. And you can see some of the training times that I got here. I won't run, I mean, it, it takes, six-ish minutes on this dual H100, eight with a single H100. So it's not exactly 100% efficiency in terms of it's going to double in, in speed. I've got a variety of other cards, GPUs, that I have tried this on over the years. So this is, this is my example for this. I've got a link to this in the description. You've probably seen me use this in other examples previously. So I'll probably do another video or two on using this dual GPU system while I still have it available. And please subscribe to the channel if this was useful to you. I do many projects related to AI, machine learning, and often in conjunction with, with companies such as Exact. And again, a huge thank you to Exact for providing this system.